Hi, good morning. My name's Travelling Jones, and it's a lovely day here in Warrington. Today, I'm going to be looking at some different books from an organisation called Expert Health. We've got a range of books which are very, very easy to follow, excellently illustrated. And today, I'm going to be looking at this particular book here, which is called Expert Diabetes. Now, I am not diabetic, and I am not giving medical advice, but I want to share some of the things that this book has actually got inside. I put some markers in here, so um, I've had a look through. Right, the insides, it's a very, very colourful. Pictures, illustrations, words which are highlighted in easy to read and understand paragraphs. It talks about here, what is pre-diabetes and diabetes? Did you know that we should only have five to seven grams, and that's about one teaspoonful of sugar, glucose, sorry, in our blood at any one time. Diabetes is a condition in which the amount of glucose in the blood at diagnosis or the measurement of average glucose over the last two to three months is too high. This happens when the body cannot move the glucose out of the blood properly, either because it's not produced enough insulin, which is produced by the pancreas, or because the insulin it is producing isn't working as well as it should do, and they put in brackets, this is called insulin resistance. So that's what pre-diabetes and diabetes is. So if anybody out there is classed as type 2 diabetic, then that's your condition here. It says, again, diabetes is a condition in which the amount of glucose in the blood at diagnosis or the measurement of average glucose over the last two to three months is too high. This happens when the body cannot move the glucose out of the blood properly, either because it's not producing enough insulin or because the insulin it is producing isn't working as well as it should do. This is called insulin resistance. And at the bottom here, there's a diagram of how that process works in the body. So again, a great book. And this page here this has kind of put my diabetes into remission. This is on page seven. Traditionally, type two diabetes was considered a progressive condition with treatments aimed at slowing the rate at which health declined. Now, here's a fact. However, we now know it is possible to stop this progression or even to put type 2 diabetes into remission. And in brackets, note type 1 diabetes cannot be reversed. That's a different, that's a different issue. OK, so if you're type 2 diabetic, you need to take this on board and realise that your type 2 diabetes can be put into remission. You can do something about it. And the answers can be found in here and stay with us on the Keep Fat Club. Right, it's um, over here we've got some information here upon the dietary approach, low fat. So I'm just going to read from this. This is on page 36. What is the low fat dietary approach? A low fat dietary approach restricts how much fat is consumed. The level of fat restriction can differ, but typically this way of eating involves it having less than 70 grams of fat per day or less than 30% total energy calories from fat. We spoke about calories the other day. As you can see below, the guideline in the nutrition for health model is for people to have between zero and four portions of added fat per day. When following this approach, this won't be the only fat they're having though, as there are also some of the essential fats in protein-based foods and in milk and dairy products. Mm -hmm. But we mustn't go down the road of thinking that fat is bad for us because Dr. Joanne McCormack's website is called Fat Is My Friend. So let's go back to type 2 diabetes and we're looking here on this page here at Carbohydrate Awareness. And this is on page 65. It says the most important factor when considering blood glucose control, and that's what we said that type 2 diabetes was, is the amount of carbohydrate we eat. Carbohydrate is one of the three main macronutrients in our diet alongside fat and protein and is the only nutrient that directly increases blood glucose levels. Read that again. Carbohydrate, that's what we're talking about here, is the only nutrient that directly increases blood glucose levels. And I read before saying that it should only have um, about one teaspoonful of blood glucose in your system at any one time. So if it's higher than that, it's because of the carbohydrate that you're eating. Continuing, the only thing we use carbs for in the body is energy. 
Though carb containing foods sometimes contain fibre or other vitamins and minerals that can have beneficial effects. Most people think we need to eat carbs. But this is not true. Although the brain does use up to 130 grams of glucose per day, if we don't eat any carbs, listen to this, if we don't eat any carbs, our body can make its own out of fats or protein. Again, repeating what was said earlier, we should only have 5 to 7 grams of glucose in our blood at any one time, a requirement our, our body can easily meet. It can make that glucose itself. We can also get fibre and other vitamins and minerals that carb-containing foods might contain from other sources. So, a great, great book. Let's find another page here. <clears throat> this is Coping With Bad Days. And I've had people, you know, ask me questions about what you do in this situation. And I have bad days as well. We all have bad days. So I'll read them from here, and this is on page 89. No matter what you do, things won't always go to plan. Dealing with minor setbacks is essential to success to make sure they don't cause you to make other choices that don't fit your new dietary approach. Here are some tips to help you on the way. So they've highlighted some problems down here. I'm not going to read them all. I'll just read a couple to you. Problem. I'm experimenting with a low-carb approach and ate something believing it didn't contain carbs, but then found out it did. Suggestion. Become more carb aware by looking at food packaging or checking on carb counting. So I spoke about this. We've got the Calorie and Carb Counter book. And I also made a video about reading um, tin can labels and bottle labels and jar labels. So we know what to do about that one. Next problem question. I gave in to my cravings. It's easy to do that. It's too easy. Suggestion. Increase enjoyment of your new dietary approach e.g. by trying new recipes and increasing variety, in brackets, as sticking to the same foods can be boring, and ensure that you're having sufficient nutrient-dense food so that you aren't left hungry. So, great, great advice in here. I'm moving on to my last marker in the book. This, is talk, this talks about food tips. A whole page on here, two pages. I think there's more than two pages, yeah? More pages talks about zero and low calorie sweeteners, artificial sweeteners, focus on alcohol. Um, food tips is a good one for you. Red wine. I spoke about this. Will red wine increase my blood glucose levels? Are there any health benefits from drinking it? Here's the answer. Red wine is made by crushing and fermenting dark coloured grapes. The health benefits of red wine have been debated for some time. Consuming moderate amounts of red wine has been shown to be associated with health benefits such as reduced risk of several cancers, dementia and depression. It only has a very small effect on blood glucose levels. In brackets, a small glass of red wine only has one gram of carbohydrate in it. Close bracket. And it may even increase insulin sensitivity. The health benefits associated with red wine may be due to its high content of powerful antioxidants in addition to the direct effect of the alcohol. Although there may be other reasons behind any benefits such as reduced stress levels. However, there is a fine line between moderate and excessive intake and it says see pages 108 and 109 for more on alcohol. So I'm not encouraging to go out and buy two bottles of red wine a day and to, and to drink it because we know that there's, um, that can damage your liver and that wouldn't be good for you. And so we've got to be very, very um, understanding about what we're doing to our bodies. But great organisation, Expert Health. You'll find the website www.experthealth.org.uk. And this organisation was set up by a wonderful lady called Trudy Deakin. So I recommend you get this book. And tomorrow we'll have a look at this one here. OK, so have a great day. Stay safe. Keep your face covered up if you're going out. Wash your hands. As so often as you can, sing happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, and sing that twice. If it is your birthday today, happy birthday. I'm going to have a great day. You have a great day too. God bless you all. I'm your house. Bye.